All right, so in this session, we'll see how to use MongoDB operators using the MongoDB Golang driver. Okay, so it's the same piece of code. I've got the same product, iPhone, Dreamer, and I also added one more product so that we have more data to deal with. And uh, it's a speaker, Bosch, blah, blah, blah. All right, so it's all fine. Uh, so in the last session we saw that uh, we've got uh, different types of basin, right? Bison, and we we saw three examples of actually inserting data into uh, the MongoDB database, right? So this is an example of we are using the struct directly. So we have an initialized struct here, Trima, and we are passing it directly to be inserted to MongoDB, and this is one way to do it one way to create a document into MongoDB. Uh, what happens underneath is something we don't have to know. Actually, this gets converted to, gets marshaled into the BSON document and gets uh, inserted. And how it does it, in fact, even, I'm, I'm not sure how it does it. It, it could be using uh, BSON D or M or a combination of both. And that, that's not important though. We also saw an example of how we can use BSON D document to add a document, right? So we saw that it's actually basically a key value pair, but it looks like more like an array. Uh, so here, this is a key and this is a value. So I think we talked about this. I, I won't go over it. So we saw three examples of creating a document. So one was using the struct, another using BSON D, another using BSON M. All right. And uh, there's also a way to insert many documents at the same time. Okay, so all you have to do, so this insert many method, there is an insert many method that can allow you to insert more than one document at the same time. And uh, what it accepts as a second argument is instead of uh, uh, a single struct or a BSON D or M document, it accepts an array of empty interfaces. Okay, so what, that's what I have here, an array of empty interface, and then as values, I've got iPhone 10 and speaker. Okay, so that's what it inserts. So I inserted two documents at the same time into the database. This is something that I can use. Uh, keep an eye on the syntax here. I mean, just watch out for the syntax here. Uh, it's got curly braces, and then you've got the braces after that where you put the list of structs that you want to insert. This gets kind of confusing. People just do iPhone 10 right here, right? So this is not the right way to do it. Okay, so it's gonna complain when you do that. Uh, now we'll start to see the operators. Okay, so let's see what if I want to find uh, what happened? Something happened. Okay, let's see I want to find uh, the list of products for which the price is exactly 900 USD. Okay, so I have one product here. That's iPhone, its price is 900. Okay, so what if I want to find these documents from the MongoDB? Well, so there's a find one method. You pass it the context object and that's, that's fine. And the second argument is actually the filter that you pass. All right, so the second argument is up to this point, okay? So I pass a map document, BSON map, right? What I tell it is go find the list of products for which the price is equal to 900, okay? So if the price is equal to 900, then it's going to find that one product, okay? And when you get that one product, there's a decode method on top of that that you can apply. And decode method can be applied to the type that you are looking for. So you are looking against a type, a collection of products, right? So you're going to get a product back, right? So I have, an, uh, I have a product here called find one and it has zero values right now. It's uninitialized. And I use its pointer to populate it with the fields that I found here. So when I did the search, the values that I find they will be decoded to this particular struct and uh, it will be populated with the values and then I'm printing them here. Okay, 
I will run this example but let me go through all the other examples so that I have one go at running this file and you can see all the commands together so you so you get a price equal to 900 and you find all such documents together uh, so this is the find one method there is another method that is find find one returns you just one product okay find the returns you a list of products all right here I have an example where I'm trying to look for products whose price is greater than 100 USD okay so collection would find first is context first argument second argument is my filter what I'm doing here is again the map so I'm trying to find for a product whose price is greater than 100 now how do I actually write that well uh, the way I write it is using another basin um, map based map and its first key is going to be this operator okay so this is uh, the operator MongoDB has a list of operators and I think I'll give you a link in the description of the uh, document where you can find the list of operators that you can use so this is one of this uh, one of such documents all the operators have a dollar sign preceding them so this is for greater than okay so this is one uh, uh, condition kind of so greater than 100 so this pretty much tells you that this this pretty much tells you that find for products whose price is greater than 100 okay uh, there's no a way to actually mention this something like this you, you can't do that this is not valid based on map syntax right so if you have to stick to the syntax that uh, the bison m allows you and you have to find kind of a comparison operations or logical operations in there then this is the way you go about it a lot of the configuration languages actually follow the same pattern all right so you find the products that price is greater than 100 and you get what you get back is a cursor so cursor is actually it's, it's kind of like a list of documents okay but its cursor is actually on the first document that got returned okay so as part of this search you'll get a list of documents whose price is 100 okay and in that list you will also have a cursor and that cursor will be pointing to the first element in that list and now you can keep moving that cursor to the next element and get a particular product that you want okay and it, as it turns out this find cursor has a method called next so I'm running a for loop and the condition is keep looking uh, keep going for the next element as long as you can find one it also accepts the context object okay so it's gonna look through the list that could return as part of this operation it's going to keep moving the cursor to the next product in the list until there are no products to be found okay and uh, when I do that uh, inside the for loop I have find cursor also has a decode method okay so now my cursor every time the cursor is pointing to one particular item in the list in this case one particular product okay so just like I was calling a decode method here which was actually a single product written by find one method the cursor also returns one product although it is actually pointing to a list of products but at one point it's pointing to one product in that list okay so we decode it to something that is of type product so I have this find it's a bad name I know but I just have because it uses find method that's why so I have a product called find and it's uh, it's initialized to zero values it's, it's not initialized at all it's got zero values right now it's all its fields and I'm using its pointer here again okay, what I get returned is actually at the after the end of this operation if everything goes fine my find product has been populated with the values that the cursor was pointing to at that point all right and within the for loop itself I am printing the name of that product so when you run this method or when you run this particular piece of block you get a list of products who satisfy this criteria separated by a new line character okay and that's what we'll expect to see and we'll see that in just a moment 
So now you understand how the cursor works. I'm not going to explain that in the subsequent operators explanation, uh, but I'll explain the operators. Okay. So here is a logical operator. So this was an example of comparison operator. Before that, we had an equality operator. Now this is a logical operator. Logical operators like AND or XOR, those things, right? So I have this time I want to find products whose uh, price not only price is greater than 100 USD but the quantity of that product is also greater than 30 okay so these two are my conditions just like this right this was one condition similar to that this is also another condition and I have two conditions and I want to actually end them I want both of these to be satisfied okay so what I do again I have another map document based on map document and inside that I have an AND operator being used here and as part of its value I'm going to supply the list of conditions that I want to be satisfied together right so when it talks when you say list it's going to be an array and Bison has that array element here right so Bison dot a and then inside that you provide both of your conditions so now when both of these conditions are satisfied because we have an AND operator then this logic filter has been evaluated to true that's what you can say so I have extracted this out to a separate filter variable as opposed to inlining the variable here because this was kind of a long variable and I just wanted to separate it out so that you, so that you can you guys can see clearly all right so now I have a find logic uh, press uh, is my cursor now in this case I'm using the same method find and I'm applying the logic filter and I get the product and I'm printing its name inside the for loop each separated by the carriage return all right so that was for the logical operator the second is the element operator uh, the one after that so element operator actually checks for things like exists or something right it's, it's also got a list of other operators I'm explaining one such operator so this time I want to actually find products for whom this accessory field actually exists okay now uh, it is possible that for some products uh, accessory is not even part of that okay so if you buy a pencil then there's no accessory to it right it, the pencil itself is you know a whole product but uh, that's uh, that's a business explanation but so that's that's what I'm trying to find here so if the uh, struct if the if the product has any accessory if the, it has the accessory field and if it's been initialized to some values actually then I want uh, the list of such products to be returned so the name of the field and then as part of the value this operator okay so base name exist is equal to true if you send it if you set it to false then it's gonna be a negate uh, it's gonna be a negative expression of the same condition right so 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 it's, it's simple just like here we had uh, uh, the, the property that you want to be looking up for uh, to, to satisfy a particular condition you keep it as the key right so that's what we are doing here so accessories is the property that we want to match our criteria against and then uh, as part of the value we put our condition and that condition would also be put as a Bison map doc uh, map document okay and there as the first key would be our condition operator and the second would be whatever the value that operator should hold at that point okay I hope you're getting the drift so it's got the same uh, cursor element and I'm creating the element that I find and its name followed by uh, the line return okay and now I have an example of the array operator so array operator is where you find uh, when you're trying to actually look into the element that itself is of type array okay so I have accessories which is uh, a type of string slice it's a slice of strings right it's an array element and it's got all the accessories that you get as part of your product so if you have an iPhone you get the headset charger right if you have a trimmer you also get the charger and the manual and whatever right so I'm trying to look for the products for whom for, for which the accessory uh, accessories include 
charger so uh, the key is going to be the field against which I want to match this condition accessories and the value is going to be the condition the condition is going to be expressed as a BSON map document its first key is its key is going to be my operator and in this case it is all and the second is going to be the list of uh, it's going to be the value in this case I want to find all the accessories that has uh, that that has charger okay now this is an array element okay uh, this could have something more like manual here as well but right now I'm just trying to find the ones that only has charger so it's another element so the intention is to find all the products for which accessory which is uh, a slice includes a charger okay so find all such products and it's going to give you the list of such products okay now having said that now I'm going to run all these products together uh, all these functions together all right uh, the code is not very well written I'm not handling error everywhere and I'm suppressing some of uh, the val written values that I get but the intention was to show you how things work okay so right now uh, my MongoDB doesn't have the Tronics database and I'm going to actually run this uh, code in a separate uh, file uh, in a separate terminal okay so I run this and yeah so insert using you uh, insert many uh, insert using uh, bison D insert using bison M uh, then you got insert many okay uh, let's just get back to here first so I get this tronics database and then this products and I get all these products inserted so I am trying to filter then against this so comparison operator using find so there we are trying to find the products whose uh, price is greater than 100 or something right so we were able to find something a uh, comparison operator using find I think our yeah the condition was that uh, uh, we were supposed to find the products whose price is greater than 100 okay and uh, I think easy Philip streamers iPhone speakers Price is uh, price is 900, price is 120, and price is 300. Yeah, so for all of them, the price is greater than 100, so all of them get listed. Logical operator using find. So, logical operator, we had what was the condition? Uh, uh, logical operator using find, we were trying to find the, the product for which the price and quantity both are matching the criteria here okay so uh, this to satisfy the condition so I'm not going over the results here but that was the idea if you match it against the data that I had uh, these all are giving the correct results for example we had the array operator that wanted to give an output of the products that had charged the rest of one of the accessory items and clearly trimmer and iPhone do have that speaker doesn't have it so it doesn't have that although it should have but that's okay so that was it and I hope you liked it so in the next session we're going to talk to talk about the update operation uh, it's not going to be a lot of time because we already covered the operators but uh, uh, update and delete are the two methods that I want to cover and then we'll start with our products application and we'll move a lot of this code into that application so that is it thank you